Sports Watchdog. The Sports Watchdog, Ace and Kern. Hello and welcome back to the Sports Watchdog. I'm your host, Mason Kern, here as always to tell you about newsworthy happenings in the world of pro and college sports. And sometimes I'm just telling you about cool sports-related products, gadgets, and gear that I think would interest you. And on that note, I have a fantastic guest today. That would be former NFL first-round draft pick and former three-time Pro Bowl linebacker Sean Merriman. After his retirement from the league in 2013, Merriman has been pursuing entrepreneurial endeavors and now finds himself tackling the fashion industry with his newly launched athletic apparel fashion line called Lights Out for both men and women. Not only is his brand sweeping through Tilly stores across California, but it's also engaging with NASCAR as well. So Sean is here to speak more on that, a bit of football, and share some business wisdom as well. Hey, Sean, welcome to the Sports Watchdog. Hey, Mason, how are you? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for being on today. First, congratulations on the success you've been having with Lights Out, an amazing accomplishment for sure. What actually sparked the idea for the brand in the first place, and why did you decide for fashion to be your niche post-retirement? You know, for for me, um, I've always been in the fashion, as you see a lot of guys, athletes uh, in general, being involved in the fashion world. Um, I think that the two, uh, sport and and entertainment and fashion, all three of those things uh, collide. Um, In 2006, 2007, uh, you know, when I got drafted in San Diego in 2005, uh, 2006, I launched the Lights Out clothing line. And at first, I just wanted to make T-shirts and hats that Chargers fans would, would wear to the game. And I said, okay, cool. You know what? I like this. It's, it's awesome branding. Um, you know, it's fun. It's Charger blue colors, and people loved it. They wore it, and we would sell thousands of, thousands of units. Um, and that's when I knew I had something that I really loved doing. Um, I always felt that Lights Out was bigger than one person, even though I, that was a nickname given to me my sophomore year in high school at President Douglas uh, Nepal Marlboro, Maryland. Um, but I felt like Lights Out just had such a, a, a more of a mean, bigger meaning than one, than one guy. Uh, so I launched it into a brand. You know, now I'm signing uh, athletes across multiple different sports, action sports. Uh, as you just mentioned, uh, Jesse Wuji, who's my driver uh, in, in the NASCAR Canon West Series. Uh, and just the success we've had at Tilly's um, has, has been great. Well, yeah, you mentioned NASCAR and how you're partnering with uh, the driver there. Can you tell us more about that initiative and what your overarching goals are there? Yeah, well, you know, I, I got a chance to meet uh, Jesse Awuji, who's uh, you know, one or two African Americans in, in the sport of NASCAR. Um, you know, I've been around the, the sport since 2008 when they had me to come out to be the a Grand Marshal um, at the Fontana races, and I just fell in love with the sport. So I kind of hung around and hung around and um, got a chance to meet Jesse about a year ago. And, you know, I came in initially as his car owner, but now also being a part of the team uh, and also selling a product and, and pushing apparel that's uh, racing the NASCAR theme uh, lights out apparel in uh, certain parts of the country. So um, to me, it, it's been an adventure. For one, I think the NASCAR is a great sport. Uh, we would love to be able to bring more diversity, more people and minorities uh, who wouldn't have the opportunity to come to races. Uh, we would like to get them out to more races and, and see how great of a sport it is. You've clearly had early success now that the line is being offered in Tilly stores throughout California, as we said earlier, as well as on their website. But do you see the line expanding into other retail outlets as well up ahead? Yeah, we, we, we definitely uh, want to expand the line, but we want to make sure we have, you know, cool and, and, and innovative products that people just love to wear. Uh, to me, it's more important that people love the product and they, they are able to get it in certain locations than in, to just sell it everywhere. We're, we don't want to sell everywhere. It's just not, you know, something I'm really into. Uh, so we thought that Tilly's was a great partner for us, and, uh, you know, it's, it's been great. So, you know, you guys, go make sure you go to Tilly's and, and ask for Lights Out. Make sure you do Lights Out Dance. They don't have Lights Out in <laughs> Lights Out Dance until they bring the product in there. So uh, it's been great for us. Now, can you give us any inside track on what will be new and exciting for the lineup ahead? I know the holidays will be a busy time for you, but how about next year? Yeah, you know, the holiday is always a big time for us. You know, we made a really big holiday push. Um, but we're we're definitely expanding the line uh, into more of, of joggers and, and uh, more casual wear. There's been um, a really a, a big hit for us on e-commerce. Uh, you can go to lifestylebrand.com, and we sell a bunch of products that's not in source on there. Um, but we're, we're definitely expanding the product across cities across the country. Okay, now back onto the business front. You have such great things going on and are obviously on top of your game. So on that note, so many professional athletes struggle after they've retired. For you, what was the hardest part of transitioning from being an NFL linebacker to becoming an entrepreneur? 
Well, you know, what, one of the biggest things about, about being an athlete, right, is we love the competitiveness. We love to compete week in and week out, Sundays, running out to the crowd, 70,000 people yelling and screaming your name, going crazy. <laughs> and one day that, that stops, right? Uh, it stops, and it's not the same anymore. The regimen of waking up, you know, 6.30 in the morning, getting in the gym, going to watch film study, practice, and uh, just being around your teammates in the locker room, these things change. So it's, it, 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 it's hard for guys to transition from the life that we lived to we were 10 years old, uh, now moving to something else. For me, it, it was it – was, I'm not going to say easy because nothing, nothing's easy about moving on from, from something you've been doing since you were a kid, but it was uh, better, I guess, in, in my situation because I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to do some TV and broadcast and stay around the sport but I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be able to go out and build a great company, um, and I wanted to be able to have my own athletes one day, and, and you know, here we are. Yeah, I think it's really important that you especially had a, a game plan and a retirement plan. I think everyone should should try to achieve that. But I want to shift over to this current NFL season. I understand that earlier this year you were, again, a guest speaker at the Charters Rookie Transition Program. So what were some of the main insights you had for this year's rookie squad, and have you seen any of your advice actually playing out on the field? Yeah, um, you know, my number one advice was to uh, – Remain focused on, on your job, right? Because when you get drafted and you're a young rookie and uh, you come from college and now you're playing on the biggest platform in the country, you know, football is the biggest uh, sport and probably the most watched sport in the country, and you have all these different opportunities, you know, your publicists, your financial advisors, uh, people want you to come and show up at this pace, uh, place, appearances, and all in all, you have to be able to focus on one thing, and that's your craft, and um, and for me, when I came in, that was one thing I struggled with. I had so many opportunities. It was things coming left and right um, and so many things coming fast. And I had to really take my time, slow everything down, and realize that football was the main object- objective and everything else came second. But what do you make of all the controversy surrounding the national anthem, the president's comments, the protests, and all of these events that are making headlines this season? You, you know, um, Initially, when, when Colin Kaepernick kneeled, I didn't think it was that big of a deal, right? I, if I was in his situation, um, I wouldn't have. Uh, you know, I believe that we have, a, as an NFL player, we have a big enough platform. we got social media, different publications, digital media, TV, mm-hmm. networks. There's so many different opportunities to express yourself and organize groups, doing whatever you want to, so I wouldn't have did it in that place. Uh, being said of, of, of what he was standing up for, well, obviously we have a problem here in, in this country, and um, and that's what he was exercising his right to do. Um, and, you know, I've always felt like, you know, if people had a issue with him doing it, maybe, maybe they should have had an issue with some of the problems uh, that, that's going on here in our country. Um, so that was, that was my personal feeling about that. I wish it wasn't made a bigger deal and didn't cause such a divide in NFL and such a uh, big ruckus because – I think the people's ideas about what the, what the meaning of what he was trying to accomplish got confused, um, and it caused it caused a stir. You know, it caused stirs in plenty of locker rooms. It caused stirs in the media and the, uh, you know, on organization. It was a huge problem, and I wish it would have got handled in a different way earlier uh, to really get guys focused on the game of football because that's what it's about at the end of the day. I mean, you can have your causes and what you believe, and everybody has different beliefs, and that's great. But the, the biggest thing is to remain uh, focused on, on, the, on the task at hand, and that's to win football games. Obviously, another big story was uh, the Chargers moved from San Diego to Los Angeles, as you well know. And considering you were with the organization for six years between 2005 and 2010, the fans are not as been poor, and the success has been limited with a 3-6 and six record, which is tied for second to last in the AFC West. So with all that in mind, do you see the Chargers ever making a return to San Diego? And if they do, would the fans receive Dean Spanos and the rest of the team really in good favor? Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't see them moving back. Um, you know, I was one of the guys that uh, wanted them. Obviously, obviously, and also my former teammates that I played with as well wanted the team to stay in San Diego. Um, you know, I, I've adjusted to the move, and I've uh, been to just about every home game this year. Um, and they started 0-4. That's that's the biggest issue. I, I don't. I don't believe that the move had a whole lot to do with it. Um, but, you know, when you have fans who grew up and, and, and loved the San Diego Chargers at that time, uh, and now you start the season off 0-4, it's difficult. You know, you got to win some games early to win people back over. That's just what it's about. And 
Um, they, they went 0-4, and they had a good stretch of the uh, season where they won some games back-to-back, and it looked like they were really coming together. And they lost the back-to-back games out, uh, to the Patriots and then to the Jaguars, which they you know, obviously could have won. So they need to just figure out their identity, get back to winning, in order to get those fans who are already on the fence about following the team anyway. Yeah, it's definitely still going to be hard for some people, like you said, who've been San Diego fans, San Diego Chargers fans their whole lives, and then all of a sudden they're gone. But uh, eventually, uh, people should get adjusted to the move. But on a, on a lighter note now, do you have any Super Bowl predictions for this season or, or even hopes? You know what? This season has been crazy. Um, <laughs> all the people who I thought, you know, I thought, the, I thought the Saints were going to be terrible this year, to be honest. Um, and, you know, they've been lighting it up. So uh, they, they're one of the teams that caught me off guard. Uh, I thought the Seahawks really, really had a chance. But, you know, they just had Sherman to go down. They had a bunch of uh, uh, guys banged up and um, just all over the board. I thought Oakland Raiders, you know, would just be a, a team that's just crushed this year. So uh, you you got to look at when it's coming out of the AFC, you got to look at the Steelers uh, and the Patriots and, you know, probably get the Saints, man. I, I, for whatever reason, I really like the Saints in the direction they're going right now. It seems like they're clicking on all cylinders. All right, well, you guys heard it first. That's Sean Marin's Super Bowl take. But back on the business front now, has there been any defining factors in your various careers, both as a pro football player and now post-retirement as an entrepreneur, moments that were game changers, so to speak, uh, even behind the scenes? Yeah, to me uh, – you know, I just I just really knew what I want. I had a platform, right? I had this this name that I was given this nickname. Of course, my son here with lights out. Um, you know, I knocked out four four guys in a high school football game my sophomore year. So I was given this name, and not really knowing uh, how how big it was going to be and turn into this this brand and this company. Um, and the plat being uh, you know being on the platform and playing in the NFL, it just catapults everything you do. Um, so I, I think for me, you know, getting drafted out to play in San Diego was not only because it was 75 degrees year round, uh, but, you know, also being here close to L.A. and, and really known as L.A.'s team probably, um, the, just the opportunities that I was awarded over the last 10 years. Uh, so, you know, that's probably that's probably it. But yeah, opportunity is definitely everything. Now, looking back at it all, at this point in your life and success and all you've been through, what advice would you give to your 16-year-old self? Uh, slow down, man. I, you know, I was always one of the guys just went, went, go, go, go. And I think you have to slow down some time in life and enjoy the moment at the time. You know, I go back and I talk to some of my former teammates, uh, LaDainian Thomas, and uh, I was with Philip Rivers and Antonio Gates yesterday, mm-hmm. and we were just talking about some of the great times that we had right in the locker room and, I played on a team with three Hall of Fame guys. And uh, when you're playing and you got practice every day and you got all season workouts and all these things, um, things move very fast. You know, you you remember being a rookie, being drafted in 2005, and next thing you know, you're retiring eight years later. Okay, that's your NFL career. It's like, man, what, where in the hell eight years gone? Right? So uh, if I can tell <laughs> my six year old self to just like, you know, enjoy, enjoy the time at the moment. Um, you know, just keep doing the things I was I was doing. I always worked hard and gave my best effort no matter what I did. Uh, but just slow down and enjoy the process. How about in general? What advice can you give to those who are trying to overcome obstacles and attain their own dreams, whether in sports, school, in the business world, whatever, really? You know what? Keep going no matter what. Uh, there's going to be so many discouraging factors right along the way. Uh, the, the naysayers, you can't do this. It hasn't been done before. Um, that's impossible. We don't think you can do this. Keep going because ultimately, at the end of the day, you're going to prove all those people wrong. But you have to keep going and believe uh, believe in yourself and, and believe that you can get it done. Well, Sean, all together you provided the Sports Watchdog listeners with some really great information and certainly much to think about. Thank you so much for sharing. And we definitely all need to head to Tilly's for some Lights Out apparel, which also would make great holiday gifts, as I'm sure you would agree. Am I right? Oh, absolutely. And we'll have uh, new drops in there for the holidays, so make sure you guys check us out at Tilly's. All right, thank you so much, Sean. So that's it for today, gang. And as always, anyone who wants to connect with me, the Sports Watchdog, on Twitter can do so at a Sports Watchdog, and on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube as well at the Sports Watchdog. So until next time, keep your eye on the ball.